the ancient and pre-modern practices of induced abortion and the different methods and attitudes towards it in various cultures and regions. Induced abortion is the deliberate termination of a pregnancy. It has been known since ancient times and various methods have been used to perform or attempt it. These methods include the administration of abortifacient herbs, the use of sharpened implements, the application of abdominal pressure, and other techniques. In some cultures, abortion was accepted as a way of controlling fertility, preventing unwanted births, or preserving health. In others, it was condemned as a violation of moral, religious, or legal norms. The availability and safety of abortion also vary depending on the level of medical knowledge, social attitudes, and legal regulations. Some examples of ancient and pre-modern practices of induced abortion are In ancient Egypt, the Ebers papyrus from 1550 BC contains recipes for abortifacient drugs made from plants and animal parts. In ancient India, the Vedic and Smriti laws reflected a concern with preserving the male seed of the three upper castes and imposed penalties for women who had abortions or priests who provided them. However, some texts also describe surgical methods of abortion performed by barber surgeons. In ancient Assyria, the Code of Ashura from 1075 BC prescribed the death penalty for a woman who procured an abortion against her husband's wishes. In ancient Greece and Rome, Abortion was widely practiced and tolerated as a means of family planning, population control, or gender selection. Various herbal remedies, mechanical devices, and surgical procedures were used to induce abortion. Some philosophers and physicians defended abortion as a natural right, while others opposed it as a crime against nature or society. In medieval Europe, Abortion was generally prohibited by the Christian church and secular authorities as a form of homicide or infanticide. However, some exceptions were made for cases of rape, incest, deformity, or danger to the mother's life. Abortion was also practiced clandestinely by women who used herbal concoctions, physical activities, or instruments to end their pregnancies. Some medical texts also described surgical techniques for removing the fetus or placenta. In medieval China, abortion was practiced as a form of birth control or eugenics. Some Taoist texts advocated abortion as a way of preserving the mother's vital energy or achieving immortality. Various herbal medicines, acupuncture points, and manual methods were used to induce abortion. Some Buddhist texts also condoned abortion as a compassionate act to spare the child from suffering. In medieval Islam, abortion was generally forbidden by the Quran and the Hadith as a form of murder or infanticide. However, some jurists allowed abortion before insolment, the moment when the fetus acquires a soul, which was variously defined as 40, 80, or 120 days after conception. Some medical texts also described abortifacient drugs and surgical procedures for terminating pregnancies. In pre-Columbian America, abortion was practiced by some indigenous peoples for various reasons such as population control, health preservation, or ritual purposes. Some plants such as peyote, cottonroot bark, and black cohosh were used as abortifacients. Some tribes also performed surgical abortions by inserting sharp objects into the uterus or cutting open the abdomen. These are some examples of how the idea and practice of abortion has changed over the eras in different cultures and regions. Abortion has always been a controversial and complex issue that involves ethical, social, legal, and medical aspects. In the 19th century, abortion and contraception were not always illegal or controversial in the United States. However, this changed as various forces influenced the laws and public opinion on these issues. Two of the most influential forces were the American Medical Association and the Catholic Church. The American Medical Association, AMA, was founded in 1847 and soon began a campaign to make abortion illegal. The AMA argued that abortion was immoral, dangerous, and against the interests of the medical profession. The AMA also wanted to assert its authority over midwives and other practitioners who performed abortions. By 1860, more than 20 states had criminalized abortion. The Catholic Church also opposed abortion and contraception, 
especially after Pope Pius IX declared in 1869 that abortions at any stage of pregnancy were punishable by excommunication. The Catholic Church had a large and growing presence in the U.S., especially among immigrants from Ireland, Italy, and other countries. The Catholic Church used its political and social influence to lobby for anti-abortion and anti-contraception laws. One of the most restrictive laws was the Comstock Act of 1873, which made it a federal crime to sell or distribute contraception through the mail or across state lines. The Comstock Act was drafted by Anthony Comstock, a devout Christian who crusaded against prostitution, pornography, and birth control. The Comstock Act also banned the publication and dissemination of information about birth control and abortion. Many states followed the federal law and enacted their own versions of the Comstock Act. These laws had a significant impact on women's reproductive rights and health in the U.S. Women who wanted to prevent or end unwanted pregnancies had few legal options and faced many risks. They had to resort to unsafe methods such as self-induced abortions, illegal abortions by unqualified providers, or traveling to other countries where abortion was legal. Many women suffered from infections, injuries, infertility, or death as a result of these methods. The 19th century bans on abortion and contraception in the U.S. were not based on scientific evidence or public consensus, but on the agendas of powerful groups such as the AMA and the Catholic Church. These groups shaped the laws and public opinion on these issues for decades to come.